far from the warmth of the inner solar system, beyond Saturn's dazzling rings and Uranus's tilted, frozen horizon, there is a world wrapped in storms. A world so distant that sunlight takes four hours just to reach it, and so mysterious that only one spacecraft has ever seen it up close. This is Neptune. With one close encounter, decades of telescope images, and the extraordinary clarity of the James Webb Space Telescope, we've managed to piece together a picture of what's happening inside this distant ice giant. And the truth is, the deeper you go, the stranger Neptune becomes. You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy this video, please tap the like button and leave a comment. It really does help more than you can imagine. Neptune's story begins long before spacecraft, long before powerful telescopes, long before we had any ability to see the outer solar system with clarity. In the early 1800s, astronomers noticed something strange. Uranus wasn't behaving the way physics predicted. It drifted ever so slightly off its expected orbit. The only explanation was that another planet farther out was tugging on its gravity. So French mathematician Aubin Le Verrier ran the numbers. He predicted exactly where this unseen planet had to be. And when astronomers pointed their telescopes at those coordinates, they found it almost immediately. I always like the idea of this moment because it proves that our understanding of the universe isn't limited to what we can simply see. Neptune was the first planet in human history discovered through mathematics alone. For over a century after its discovery, Neptune remained just a tiny, shimmering disk, too distant, too faint. But that all changed in 1977, when Voyager 2 began its grand tour of the outer solar system. We have ignition and we have liftoff. We have liftoff of the Titan Centaur carrying the first of two Voyager spacecraft to extend man's senses farther into the solar system than ever before. It visited Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus before finally reaching Neptune in August 1989, 12 long years after its launch. But Voyager 2 didn't orbit Neptune, it simply flew past. Think about that for a moment, 12 years of travel for a single brief encounter. And this is something that happens more often than most people realise. New Horizons did the same at Pluto, nine and a half years to reach it and then just one quick swoop across its frozen heart before disappearing into the black void. These missions don't get second chances, just a tiny window, one shot, to capture everything they can. But sometimes, those brief moments are enough to change everything we know about a world. Voyager's snapshot of Neptune is exactly that. It revealed a world wrapped in supersonic storms, striped with high-altitude clouds, and scarred by a now famous great dark spot. A storm the size of Earth tearing across the planet at unimaginable speeds. It found thin incomplete rings and six new mysterious moons. And then Voyager 2 kept going, leaving Neptune behind forever and leaving us with the only close-up images we've ever captured. Nearly everything we know about Neptune's interior comes from that fleeting encounter. But combine that with decades of modern telescope observations and our growing understanding of how giant planets behave, and we can begin to piece together a picture of what is happening deep beneath those churning clouds. You know, while I've been working on this Neptune video, I've had something on my desk that reminds me why I love space exploration so much. 
It's a watch made by Diatom, a team here in the UK who wanted to create watches that aren't just accessories, but objects that literally carry moments from the story of the solar system. Let me show you. Every Diatom watch contains the actual fragment of a meteorite, a real piece of metal forged billions of years ago at the very beginning of the solar system. The dial of the Diatom grey dot shows this perfectly, revealing the Vidmanstaten pattern, a pattern that can only form inside the slow, cooling heart of an asteroid. Then there's the detail I still can't quite believe I own. Each watch, like my blue dot here, contains a piece of captain foil, literally the material that helped Neil Armstrong and the Apollo 11 crew survive humanity's first moon landing. This went to the moon and back. And to tie it all together, Diatom do something pretty incredible. Every watch is sent above the atmosphere into near space before being packed up for delivery. But beyond all the storytelling, they're also genuinely well-built watches. I own the stunning grey dot and the blue dot, but there are others. The blue dot Mark II Meteor Dial is one I'm hoping to add to my collection very soon. So head over to the Diatom website and make sure you use my link, because as a V101 viewer, you can get an exclusive 10% off any Diatom watch. Beneath Neptune's violent atmosphere, it all comes down to pressure and temperature. The pressure rises so quickly and the temperature climbs so sharply that gas begins to thicken, to compress and to merge into something unrecognizable until it slowly transitions into an ocean without a surface. But not like the oceans we are familiar with, this is a vast, icy, dense sea. A superheated mixture of water, methane and ammonia ices crushed together under pressures hundreds of thousands of times stronger than at sea level on Earth. In this part of Neptune, a region scientists call the mantle, the temperature rises into the thousands of degrees Celsius, so high that the material should boil instantly. But pressure beats temperature. And I know what you're thinking. How can you have ice that's hot? It sounds impossible, but Neptune doesn't play by Earth's rules. The pressure is so intense that it forces these materials, materials that would normally be solid in typical conditions, into a strange state of matter. Scientists describe it as a supercritical fluid. It's difficult to describe because Neptune's mantle is unlike anything found on Earth and so unlike anything we have ever experienced before. Inside this layer, Electrical currents race through the churning fluid, and this entire region may be responsible for powering Neptune's chaotic storms above and generating its wildly tilted, lopsided magnetic field. Think of it like a hidden engine, deep under the storms that Voyager saw, driving everything that's above it. But this is not where the bizarreness of Neptune ends, because deeper into the mantle still, the conditions become just right for the chemistry to change once again. As pressures and temperatures rise to levels almost beyond imagination, methane molecules are crushed and ripped apart. The hydrogen is forced away and the carbon inside begins to rearrange itself into something new something crystalline. It's difficult to wrap your head around, but scientists believe it may literally rain diamonds. Tiny crystals forming high above, sinking like precious hailstones in a dark hell. Experiments on Earth using intense lasers and extreme compression show that diamond rain is not only possible, it's likely. And if that's true, the Neptune's interior may hold great churning seas of floating diamond 
Bergs. It's one of those ideas where the science almost sounds poetic. A planet where storms rage above a sea of diamonds. But don't look away yet, because believe it or not, things get even more strange if you look deeper again. Next is an almost indescribable environment, the heart of Neptune. Temperatures at the core could exceed 7,000 degrees Celsius. Pressures might reach millions of times that at sea level on Earth and matter likely behaves in ways we can barely understand, let alone imagine. Just think of what this environment might be like. A landscape where every grain of matter is compressed beyond recognition. Unlike Jupiter and Saturn, whose cores appear to be fuzzy or partially dissolved, Neptune's core is still believed to be solid, a compact, dense world within a world. It may be about the mass of Earth, made of metals and exotic ices all crushed together into a single, immovable object. The intense pressure caused by the thousands of kilometers of material above it, bearing down on it keeps it from being molten, and instead forces the rock and metals into a solid, super-dense phase of matter. When Voyager 2 left Neptune behind in 1989, it carried with it the only close-up images of this distant world that humanity has ever taken. In the decades since, we've watched Neptune through Hubble, from ground observatories, and now with the extraordinary clarity of the James Webb Space Telescope. And each time we look, we catch something new. A brightening at the South Pole. A storm that appears and disappears. Even in the distant frozen realms of the solar system, Neptune is alive. It changes, it surprises, it's unpredictable. And that's what I find most fascinating. That even today, with everything we've built and everything we know, there are still places in our solar system we can name, describe and recognise. Yet they remain almost completely unexplored. It's like seeing an island just off the shore, close enough to point to, but impossible to sail to and walk upon. Neptune is currently one of those islands. A planet where storms roar faster than sound, where icy oceans likely glow with heat, and where diamonds may fall through the darkness toward a hidden core. If you've made it this far, thank you. You are exactly the kind of person I make these videos for. So please do leave a comment and like the video. It helps more than you can imagine. And if you want to go one step further and help support the channel directly, why not consider becoming a V101 core member or patron? The links are in the description. It keeps this project going and gives you some nice perks including your name in every single video and exclusive content. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.